great to have you back. It seems to me that I am fluctuating between two states continuously. One is the conscious observing the character. The other, I completely forget the consciousness. I am just in what I am just living without there being an observer. I was wondering if you could comment on that. Thank you so much. The question that I would like to go to, and this might be related to words, it might actually not have anything to do with um, with what's happening there, is who, like, so you're moving your attention to, you're, throughout the day, you're moving your attention to this con conscious observer. And that to you is judged as better than just everything, like just being in the flow and letting your mind do whatever, because you've been taught that, I presume, and because of experience. And I would say on the human level, it is like a good thing to do with the mind it's like you see the stories you're going into you become conscious of the stories you're going into and you're pulling yourself back but who knows the consciousness so you feel like you're putting yourself into the big observer but who knows that so what's being talked about is this energetic shift to the observer which isn't an activity but i don't harp on that about that too much or maybe i do but i don't really realize it because that can make the person feel really hopeless because the person always wants to do something about his predicament. So the person is like a doer. It's like, mm, I'm going to go and get some nuts. I'm going to pick some berries off the tree. I'm going to clear up the dog poo. I'm going to walk my children to the park. I'm going to do something about my emotions. I'm going to become more conscious. I'm going to become more enlightened. So it's like a doer. It's got this mentality of doing and there's nothing wrong with that but it then gets into a belief system that it's going to practice this and it can put itself into consciousness. But who can put itself into consciousness? There is the appearance of doership. There is appearance of somebody putting their attention into this moment, which is great. Like loads of people recommend that. I think it's super healthy. I think it can also be an avoidance um, of emotions, but through time that you should begin to become, begin to become more conscious of that but who is it that's doing that and who knows that consciousness this everything and nothingness that is being talked about is instantaneous perception it's not something that can be seen with the mind or anything that can be known in time it's observing it's knowing itself it is itself it's not knowing itself separate from things it is knowing itself as things. It's so intimate. And this is what oneness is. This is what not two-ness means. And that's happening in the experience there. But what's also happening, more than likely, is a fixation on this person. And this person maybe believes that it's got to put practice in it to get to enlightenment, which you can tell yourself that story if you want to. It might make you feel more motivated. It might make you feel better about yourself. And if it makes you feel better about yourself, go for it. But, but then there can also be this like chipping away of that. Like who? Who? The observing is here. The observing is happening. It's not something you have to work for. You will work for it till the end of days if that person believes it can get it. And the whole time... That which is watching is here. It reminds me of this Buddhist story, which I never get the names right. But you have to bear with me. It's about this. I'm just going to go for it with the names and just understand that I'm dyslexic and I get all my letters back to France and can't remember the pronunciation of things and words and names. So, um... There is this man that lives in the forest who was once a university lecturer. His name is like Ratnagona or something. Something like that, but it's Buddhist name, you know. And he is like highly intelligent. And for some reason he gets the idea that he, 
he has to go into the forest and kill a hundred people and get a hundred fig fingers a cut off their fingers to so get a hundred fingers and make them into a necklace around his neck and it's it's like something to do with his work or mythology or something but he gets this idea into his head just like we get into the into the idea that non-duality is truth like that what we speak about non-duality is truth or ourselves we get this into our head he got into that into his head that he had to kill people and get all their fingers and stick it in the necklace around his neck i'm sure khaleesi if she was human this is something she would like to do except it would be chicken heads um so he had killed 99 people and he'd got 99 fingers and he had one person left to kill and the buddha is in a local village and he's just about to walk through the forest and all the locals go don't go in there there is Ratnagona in there and he's going to come and he's going to kill you and he's going to chop off your finger and he's going to put it around your neck and his neck and um, and you're going to be dead. And the Buddha is just like, he waves his hand, he pulls his, cheek, his lips upside down and he begins to walk into the forest. And, um, and Ratnagona sat in his tree, sees the Buddha and he's like, yes, my last victim. So he jumps out of the tree and he starts chasing the Buddha. But no matter how fast he runs, he can't catch up with the Buddha. He runs and he runs and he runs, but the Buddha stays the same amount of distance in front of him. Eventually, exhausted, he's like, stop! You're moving too fast, I can't catch up with you. And the Buddha turns and says simply, it's not me that's moving too fast, it is you. I am perfectly still. Beautiful. Ah, oh, beautiful. You could say that Ratnagona represents the mind and the Buddha represents absolute. That's what you could say, but you could interpret it lots of ways. When I was listening to this Mormon podcast yesterday, I heard them interpret the Lord of Rings in pro of the Mormons. And I was like, hmm, I've heard lots of people do that in a non-dualistic way too. Okay, I forgot where I was, so I'll just take another question. <laughs>